Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Rob and Lance with Roofing Done Right. And Lance, what I want to talk about a little bit today is adjuster interference when it comes down to insurance claims. And, you know, we've been seeing that more and more and it's already kind of a confusing process potentially for the homeowner. And so I want to take a couple minutes to go over, um, you know, when it might, might come up, how it might come up so we can address it for um, our clients and, and, and the reasoning behind it and, and what I think it is um, you know we see it more with staff adjusters as opposed to independent adjusters and you know those guys are salary based positions right so think about it if you've had this cushy job for 12 years or whatever it seems like you know they're probably pretty decent jobs really mm -hmm. what's your motivation to work harder None. <laughs> you don't have any, right? <laughs> so, so you go into, and, and you know what? We've had a pretty busy weather year this year so far in Toledo. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Right. Yeah. So these guys are probably pretty busy. Yeah. So, it, it's really a disservice to the homeowner. Um, you know, in an age where it's it's almost socially acceptable to give a subpar standard mm -hmm. um, that's one thing that we don't really accept mm -hmm. as a company um, we've always tried to strive to offer the best quality mm -hmm. across the board yeah you know from the beginning to the end of the process and a lot of times um, we find especially staff adjusters they will combat us on different aspects of the job mm -hmm. all because they just don't want to pay for it yeah and what's interesting about that is you know so by the time I get involved in the job the adjusters already been there they've already written up some level of replacement uh, and what I find is I'm gonna do my independent inspection totally regardless a lot of times I don't even look at the report prior to doing my inspection and so often, these guys just, they're, uh, they're, they're almost never even looking in the interior. They're never looking in the attics. They're asking homeowners, hey, do you have any damage? Many times the homeowner doesn't even know that they have damage. Right. And so, um, so then I'm going in there and, and finding a lot of items that they miss. And I think that upsets them because it kind of makes them look bad. Mm -hmm. It does. And... One of the things that I've come to see as being a, a very consistent is, you, you know, when, I, when a claim is called in, like, like for example, I'll just use this, this spring as an example. You know, we've had some pretty hefty windstorms. Yes. So, you know, when a wind claim is called in, you know, adjusters, they have on their mind, well, I'm, I'm going out here to look at, you know, shingles blown off of the house yeah potential siding blown off of the house maybe a gutter hanging or something like that mm -hmm. they're not it, it's not even in their mind to to think about you know well what if they have water damage mm -hmm. you know I mean it and where does this water damage even come from well it comes from shingles being blown off the roof and then a heavy rainstorm comes in after the fact yeah I mean what is the job of the shingle the, yeah exactly it causes the damage <laughs> I mean I mean, why on earth did everybody did anybody ever think to put a shingle on a house? Well, it's to protect the house. Exactly. Well, if it gets blown off the house, you know, I mean, I was on a I was on a job, an adjuster meeting the other day, mm -hmm. and this adjuster, you know, straight up told the homeowner that he did not think that the damage that was caught that the rate the water damage on the interior of the house was as a result of the sh the shingles missing on the roof. Yeah. Even though the water damage only happened after the shingles blew off the roof. Yeah. So, to which I responded, well, "How do you think it got there?" Yeah. And he couldn't even give me an answer. He just stuck with his word. Go be a door I, greeter at uh, Walmart, dude. You don't belong in this business. But anyway. you know, and and it's it's such a huge disservice, and it confuses the homeowner. Yeah. Because they don't know most of this process mm -hmm. you know it's like it's like you would never go into court without having an attorney mm -hmm. why because you don't know the law most homeowner most individuals don't know the law mm -hmm. just like most homeowners don't know what their rights are 
in regards to getting their claim properly handled. Mm-hmm. They don't know what their insurance policy states. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't read policy, mm-hmm. but they don't, they don't know what laws are in their favor. They don't know what the Ohio codes are, yep. or any of that stuff. Yep. So, these adjusters and the adjusters, for that matter, they don't even know what the Ohio codes are in most cases. You're right. You know, so it's up to a company like ours mm-hmm. that is very up to speed on this stuff to hold them to a standard that best serves the homeowner, Mm -hmm. you know? Now, the adjuster, in many cases, they're going to try and paint our company as the bad guy, Mm -hmm. saying, oh, well, they're they're just out here price gouging, Mm -hmm. they're out here, you know, trying to get rich on you, the homeowner, or something like that. Well, you know, it kind of irritates me a little bit because, one, I didn't create the pricing structure. Right. You know, that's that is a that pricing was put in place by the insurance industry. Right. They're the ones that deem the pricing on every single item that goes on a project. So you're already planned by their rules. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we're already two steps behind. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, you, you got you got massive companies out here that are charging a thousand, twelve hundred dollars a square to put on a roof. And in all reality, we don't we don't get paid a fraction of that. Yeah, and and you know people have to understand. You know, um, you get what you pay for. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, I I always revert back to this story because it's it's so true, and it and it goes across the entire industry. So. Most insurance adjusters will try to write for as little as possible, mm-hmm. knowing that most companies will concede to that, yeah. and they'll just put on the job. Mm-hmm. Well, this homeowner that I personally know, prior to me getting involved in this industry, she had sustained storm damage to her property. Mm-hmm. The insurance company, they, they offered a full replacement, but it was at a very low cost. Okay? Well they hired a company to come out and do it. Mm -hmm. This lady, two months before this happened, had just invested $100,000 in landscaping around her property. Oh, $100,000. She lived in a very nice development. I mean, she had structures everywhere. Um, I mean, it was was absolutely beautiful. It was something out of a Hallmark catalog. Mm. She had to completely replace all of that when it was all said and done. Wow. They tore off that entire house. They laid tarps out, mm-hmm. but you know what? Tarps don't. Stop don't weight. Tarps doesn't stop weight. Yeah, Trust and it me. completely destroyed everything. Mm-hmm. She had all kinds of ceramic, you know, landscaping, you know, things, statues all over the place. Yeah. All of it broken, cracked, everything. Mm-hmm. You know, lamp structures. I mean, it was it was totally destroyed. Wow. All because. You know, they got a cheap estimate mm-hmm. from the or cheap price from the insurance company. And a cheap company came out, and in order to try and maximize their money, you know, they went cheap on labor. Mm-hmm. So you really get what you pay for. You know, we, when we step foot on a property, we, we treat it like it's our own. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't want people coming onto my property, tearing something off my roof and just throwing it on the ground and, and having all kinds of disregard for, you know, the stuff that I've, I've worked very hard to make nice, mm-hmm. you know. So... One of the things that we pride ourselves in is when we leave a house, it looks exactly like it did before we got there, minus the fact, except for the fact that it's got a brand new roof. Yeah. Or siding. You know, I think the biggest point I'm trying to make here is that, like, believe we are on your side 100%. That adjuster may or may not be, if they're a staff adjuster, they're typically trained with the mindset of, you know, how to save the insurance company money. We want, yes, you know, we're making money to do our job, but we're working hard to get it done for you, too. And so, uh, unfortunately, it does happen where insurance adjusters will talk with our clients, homeowners, and try to paint us in some kind of a negative way. And um, it's not because that's accurate. It's just simply because um, it's an ego thing. And uh, we've made them look bad, and we dared to challenge their authority. And here's something that's interesting, too, which most homeowners don't know about this. And this would be a very good question for a homeowner to ask. How long have you been doing this? Mm -hmm. And what kind of training have you received? Absolutely. I've got several friends who are adjusters. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact that they went through a one-week training 
in order to get certified to go out and do this. Mm -hmm. Guess how much time was spent on actual storm damage identification, how to properly analyze it, scope out jobs, sketch jobs, go through Xactimate, which is a very intense course. Mm -hmm. Guess how much time they spent on that? Uh, two hour Monday morning segment. <laughs> About that. Yeah, that didn't yeah. surprise me. The rest of the time was spent on how to save the company money. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, how to deny a claim. Yeah. How to, how to legitimately deny a claim. Yeah. I mean, it's such it's such garbage, mm -hmm. you know, and it's such a disservice to the homeowner. Yeah, because they're in a they're in a situation where you know what? What are you paying insurance for? You're paying it for situations like this mm -hmm. when you have damage, legitimate damage to your property, and then you get some idiot that comes out to your property, and, and, you know, and and does a total disservice to you, right. you know, and and then. And then he wants to try and paint us in a bad light because we want to do a good job for the homeowner. Mm -hmm. You know, right. so it's it, it's such that it's very frustrating when that when that happens. You know, and I feel bad for the homeowners. Yeah, I really too. do I because I mean I could put on a cheap roof. Mm -hmm. You know, but at the end of the day, the homeowner's not going to be any happier than than what they were before. Right. So, yeah, it's um, yeah, it, it's it, it really is too bad how some of these adjusters you know treat their treat their customers yeah really I totally is. agree so that's kind of what I wanted to touch on today if you guys have any additional questions for myself or Lance uh, please look in the description section below this video our contact information um, is all down there if you do have storm damage we're the go-to company we're not going to just accept what the insurance company says we're going to do our own separate individual inspection a full thorough accurate inspection of both the interior and exterior to make sure all possible issues are covered and it's rare to get an insurance uh, adjuster that's going to do that so anyway guys i hope you have a good one and i'll talk to you soon have a good one